And with that, I see we are now uh, streaming live on YouTube. So I'll welcome everyone to our Prescott Town Council uh, meeting for Monday, October 4th, 2021. Uh, I will start off with a call to order and note that we will begin this meeting of council by acknowledging that we're meeting on Aboriginal land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples. In particular, we acknowledge the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, Anishabek, and the Oneida and Haudenosaunee peoples. Uh, so moving on, we have uh, approval of tonight's agenda. Uh, recommendation that the agenda for the council meeting of October 4th, 2021 be approved as presented, but I would ask council to add one uh, item for discussion under new business on an indigenous crosswalk uh, possibility uh, for the north end of uh, Prescott. Uh, could I have uh, a mover with that amended agenda then if everyone's okay with that one addition? I see Councilor Ostrander uh, raising his hand and I think Council Shankar just beat Councilor Burton uh, for seconding. Any discussion on the agenda tonight? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. Uh, item three, declarations of interest. Any member of council have a declaration uh, this evening? Seeing no. Uh, item four, five, presentations, delegations, and nothing in either uh, item there this evening. Uh, six is minutes of our previous council meetings. Uh, and uh, just one there tonight under 6.1. That's our meeting for September 20th. Recommendation reads that the council minutes dated September 20th, 2021 uh, be accepted as presented. If I could ask for a mover, please. Moved by Councilor Shankar, seconded by Councilor Young. Any discussion on that set of minutes for September 20th? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. Uh, on to seven communications and petitions. Two items there tonight. 7.1. Uh, that's in reference to uh, uh, the social services, the, the relief funding uh, phase four from the province. That is that uh, was just on our last uh, meeting, uh, the opportunity to identify and propose buildings, uh, United Counties with regards to uh, uh, emergency housing, uh, homelessness uh, shelter, I guess. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not, it uh, doesn't fall into a, a neat category as we've looked at in the past. But at any rate, we did get a response back on the clarification uh, to the questions. Mr. Armstrong, did you want to summarize the responses? I think we got responses to everything, but it's still not, I, I wouldn't say it's entirely clear what, what the direction is, but we do have joint services tomorrow morning and I'll, I'll note where the committee seems to be going with this. Certainly, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So. Uh, when we take a look and our first question was about asking where the current homeless population is, they did uh, reference that they were doing a, um, a survey uh, in the course of the week of the 21st. And so, uh, so that should give a, a better understanding. Uh, in terms of uh, where that's going to go in the next uh, five to 20 years, uh, they uh, said that it would be difficult to track. Uh, in terms of supported services, um, they mentioned that uh, they're could be mental health and addiction services, um, as well as uh, dealing with daily living, and um, that they're available across uh, Leeds and Grumble. But I think more specifically, they're in um, very specific communities that uh, they're are currently being offered in. And so uh, so certainly it, that, uh, that requires a little bit of clarification. Um, they did provide an, a, a rationale as to why it would be on uh, municipal uh, water and sewer. Um, part of the, the response, I don't think applies uh, because it would be um, quite a large facility if it was over 50,000 liters per day um, being uh, drawn. Um, in terms of uh, vacant properties, uh, they felt that they didn't have any vacant properties that uh, would meet the, ex the timing for zoning, development, site plans, uh, execution uh, within the timelines. And then um, I think the the, the, the last uh, answer to the last question, the ideal, ideal building is currently zoned residential, um, but have a easily expanded, modified, that sort of thing. It was actually probably the, the best answer um, that there to actually give a little bit of clarification as to, uh, to what they were looking for. That being said, I don't think uh, the town of Prescott own, currently owns any buildings that, uh, that would meet that need, but certainly um, we appreciate the, the responses to the questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, we do have joint services tomorrow morning, uh, which is where this item originated. At, it all started actually at the last joint services meeting. The report coming back from the group does note that the only uh, uh, 
a municipality that expressed an interest in this project is North Grenville. So the recommendation coming back to the group tomorrow was that uh, uh, most of this money be invested in North Grenville. That said, I didn't note a whole lot of, in the way of specifics in what is being suggested for North Grenville. Uh, some of the money will be used at uh, on the one project that is, is being done now at uh, on Perth Street in Brockville, because I think there was an issue, a bit, bit of a cost overrun there. This will cover that, but I think there's around $1.1, $1.2 million. Uh, the recommendation to joint services is that be invested in North Grenville. I really would like to hear some more specifics on that because I, I know my, my own personal opinions on where the need is uh, for housing like this. And, uh, but I, I don't want to say too much tonight, but it, it, it's going to be a little challenging for me to support unless I hear some real significant uh, uh, information that wasn't included on, on that, uh, on that staff report is they, they, they're looking to spend this money quite quickly and I'm not, uh, not sure that's the best way to go about it, uh, even though the need is, is, is certainly there. Uh, but uh, at any rate, any, any comments, questions from members of council on this? Uh, it, it does look like, uh, like, again, North Grenville is the only community that's expressed interest anyways. Uh, so no comments, questions? Okay, uh, we'll move on then to uh, 7.2, uh, the letter we uh, did receive from uh, Mr. DePrado here in town on uh, the 40 kilometer speed limit, some parking concerns and, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, that was just received, I think was last week. And the recommendation from staff is, uh, uh, the staff be directed to review the traffic calming policy to see if any of the suggested me measures uh, could be used in the identified areas. Uh, could I have someone move that, please? Moved by Councilor Burton, seconded by Councilor McConnell. Uh, Nathan or Matt, whomever wants to, uh, whoever wants to take this, any comments on this? I, I, a lot of this, uh, there's some of the same concerns that we've discussed here before. I brought it up at the last meeting. It was raised at the BIA as well uh, with some of the downtown uh, issues in particular. And I know, I think you met with the BIA chair uh, last week as well, Matt. Uh, so this is ongoing. I've received a, a few comments as well. And I, I guess we've all received some comments and I know we, we did, uh, something is going to come back at, at some point here uh, in the not too distant future regarding potential changes, tweaks that we could make uh, to a number of these issues. But Matt, did you want to comment on this in regards to this specific letter? Fair or Nathan, enough. sorry, I'm not sure who wants to take the, the lead on this. Sure, I, I can take this one. So in particular, uh, the letter seemed to highlight uh, Wood Street West in particular. And so we thought it would be a good opportunity to use the traffic calming policy and the uh, evaluation within it to go through, collect the data, understand uh, what the issues are, take a look at the sight lines, take a look at uh, what's actually occurring in terms of parking, and then uh, being able to uh, to really uh, speak to that. Uh, we have been also, um, there's a small section in there about speeding and on Edward Wood King, and uh, certainly we're gathering data on that as well to, uh, to really understand uh, what that looks like. So, uh, in terms of the, the specific items around Wood Street, uh, suggesting to use the traffic calling policy in terms of the, the speeding, then uh, gaining uh, the data and understanding what that means, and then uh, being able to uh, develop some uh, thoughts and ideas for council's consideration. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Open it up for comments, questions. I see Councillor Young has his hand raised already, right? Uh, Brad, I assume that um, the OPP will uh, comment on this letter as well since they received a copy of it at the next at the next meeting. Um, that's one point. The second point, I have noticed they've been running radar on, on Edward Street um, a few times in the last couple of weeks. So um, they are running radar here and there and uh, hopefully that will help slow things down. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the intention is uh, to take this back to PSB for comments. Uh, from the OPP. And that'd be the one comment I would make, uh, Mr. DePrado saying that, uh, you know, there's been a decline in, in parking practice and increased speeding since the inception of the 40 kilometer speed limit. And there's been no ticketing. That's that, that actually, that's not true. And the OPP have information to back that up. And we've all seen the, the speed traps on uh, King street and different areas, Edward street as well. They really have been clamping down on this. The problem is you can't be everywhere all the time. And uh, it's just, it's, it's a difficult situation. I would say that speeds have actually declined somewhat in town since the 40 K, but at, at the same time, we, no one ever thought it was going to be a cure all. 
Uh, but I think it has helped to a certain point. There are other areas though that I do think we need to address. Uh, other comments, questions? Uh, Councilor McConnell, please. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, I've been on council with you for 11 years and I think you probably agree with me that there's no year in that 11 years that we haven't had comments and complaints from somebody or some people in town about excessive speeding on their street, whether it be on King Street or Edward Street or uh, especially coming down the hills towards uh, King Street. I know I walked the dog on George Street this morning and somebody floated down George Street that had, had to be going about 60. Um, speeding persists. We dropped it to 40. You may be right. The speeds have come down. I don't know. I drove around town before we made that adjustment. And I think on the east-west streets, 30 was was... Well, I was quite happy going 30. When you get on to King Street, Edward Street, Churchill Road, uh, places like that, 40 seemed awful slow. And um, I had a complaint that I passed along from some folks on E Street that found the speed excessive on E Street a short period of time ago. And E Street, of course, as you know, is a very narrow street. Um, some of that may be attributable to the fact that uh, Russell and Van Cognet have been closed. I don't know. But um, I, I'm in favor of taking a look at, um, at um, Wood Street uh, to see what we can do there. But it's not just that street. And I, and I think we probably all agree it's it's all over town. I, I think the vast majority of people drive within reason, but there are people that don't. Uh, when you're going downhill, it's not hard to get over 40 kilometers an hour. And when you're on, on a long street, like Wood Street West that hooks into Hyde, uh, that's a long stretch without a stop street and the speeds can get up there pretty high. So. I think we're doing the right thing, taking a look at it, but I don't really know where it's going to go. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor McConnell. Other comments uh, from members of council tonight? Okay, so uh, I guess the uh, the direction is we will bring this back and uh, someone, I, I, I don't remember the full, uh, the full protocol with regards to that, uh, uh, that whole issue now, but someone will be in contact with Mr. DePrato, I, I'm guessing here with regards to that whole process. I know there were, were you know, allocations in there for possible petitions, what, 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 what have you with, with that. And this is quite wide ranging though, like he's made, there are comments in a number, a number of areas. And I think there's, there's definitely a lot to dig into here. And I, I, I do hope that we, uh, we bring, bring something back relatively soon on this. Uh, is we, I, I am noticing, I, I, I hear a lot of this. I heard a lot of it this summer uh, with King Street in particular, uh, with uh, the number of people walking to and from uh, Centennial Park. A lot of families using the splash pad and beach and pool. And uh, that splash pad has definitely really increased the, uh, the traffic down there, which is a good thing. But you've got a lot of kids crossing King Street in different areas. And uh, anything we can do to... Uh, remind people that uh, you're in a kind of a sensitive area and that, you know, the speed limit's not 60 or 70 down there. And there's a real long straight run. So as I mentioned, I think at the last meeting, I going back to the four ways downtown in, in, a few, in, in one, two, or even three areas might not be a terrible idea because it, we do need to slow some of that traffic down. Like Lee's right. People do come in at a, a pretty good clip and doing 60 down there does seem kind of natural. But the problem with that is you've got a lot of pedestrian traffic. So that to me is just is just too quick for uh, the people we've got crossing the road. So anyways, uh, if I, yeah, one more comment. Councilor Young, please. Uh, Brett, I was just thinking that some of those issues that uh, the gentleman raised um, are violations uh, such as um, vehicles facing the wrong direction. And I'm wondering if Mr. Merriman is on on board yet, whether we're getting uh, bylaw complaints or whether the OPP are getting bylaw complaints that um, uh, we could certainly go out and ticket those, those vehicles that uh, are offending the current traffic laws. 
the only and I've, I've talked with Sean a bit about this as well in recent weeks, because I've had a couple of people approach me. One person that's been really tracking it all over town with the parking too close to the corners. The one issue I'd say is a lot of it is, is that some of those downtown intersections, people park, run into the bank, run out. Uh, and I talked to Sean about even stationing someone down there for a while. But Matt also brought up those, uh, I don't know what they are, but those barriers that you, you basically are in the way and you, you can, they won't damage your vehicle, but they were really a, the most prominent reminder of uh, no, don't park here. So I don't know what the status is on ordering something like that if we've looked at it. And so I'll leave it up to Sean and, and Matt, any comment on what, what Ray just asked about? Did you want to go first, Matthew? Sure, I can do that. So uh, the <clears throat> um, reflective uh, bars came in today. And so uh, we'll take a look at installing them uh, this week or next and right around those intersections to help improve the, uh, the sight lines for people uh, not parking in the no parking zones. So, uh, so that's our first step. We'll see how they uh, fare in the, over the next several weeks. Um, and then uh, we'll continue working on uh, improving those sight lines. And through you, your worship. Uh, yeah, when we get a, a, a concern, Councillor Young, we, we go down almost immediately, especially when we can. Uh, again, the problem is they're stopped for such a short period of time uh, without leaving someone basically there all day to keep an eye on it. Uh, it. It does happen. I can tell you I almost got ran over the other day when I was giving someone a ticket for being. Did you feel it was personal? I guess so. Yeah, I was, was willing to leave. Yeah, it, it, I was actually, yeah, it was near your place, Councillor Shanker. Oh, so. uh, no, I know yeah. it's fun. <laughs> yeah, so we do the best we can and uh, we continue to do it. Unfortunately, enforcement is only one tool. Um, people uh, showing uh, some common courtesy to the other drivers will go a long way as well. So, And I did share a couple of uh, uh, problem areas that have been raised with me with residents. And I think we all could probably come up with one or two spots where there are ongoing issues that uh, cause issues and uh, cause problems with, with traffic flow. So if anyone else has anything like that, please let, let bylaw know about it and they'll, they'll, they'll look into it uh, for sure. Council Shanker. Uh, I just want to note, uh, maybe for anyone that's watching, is that um, Mr. DePrado there also carbon copied the OPP. So, because a lot of these things, we don't do the enforcement, right? The, the speed limit or the ticketing, we don't do that. So I don't know if it's worth to have a conversation with the OPP or have them in just to say, are you guys following this up? You know, just putting it out there. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. I've uh, talked to the inspector many, many, many times over that the last couple of years, going back to the last inspector, and they've always been really quick to respond to that. They'll run traffic, they'll put their speed spy up to check things, and uh, they definitely have been an increased presence in town. People, those tickets are happening. I would think anyone who spent any time on the east end of King Street uh, the last year or so knows that, it, that, it, that it's happening, and it's also on Edward Street as rain mentioned, so... They're doing what they can, but they've always recommended that we look into the camera system for some of the problem spots. And I know we were looking at prices on that, and we were talking to Augusta potentially to share that. Matt, did we, uh, LAS was involved in, in that as well, weren't they? And there was a possibility of uh, some better pricing on those uh, those in, those units for uh, municipalities. Anything, any movement on that? Because we, we kind of left that there a year or so ago, I think now. But they're still going through their RFP process. Um, it's quite involved and uh, usually it's a commitment of uh, three to five years. And so uh, we're just waiting for the, the outcome of that and then we'll have more to report. Thank you. Yeah, that, that is the one thing the OPP have been saying that we, we need to look at something like that because they, they simply, they, you can't get everybody with this. So that's, that's another option we could look at when we know the pricing. Uh, any further comments? Uh, seeing none, so we will. Uh, that'll be brought back to us uh, in uh, the, the coming weeks. Uh, so we do have a motion there, uh, the staff direction to, re to uh, review that traffic cal calming policy, and someone will be in touch with Mr. DePrado as well. Uh, oh, Mike, did you have a comment? Or are you? No, I got to move it or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, the motion's uh, actually actually been made. Uh, so okay. I just it's just going to call the vote if everyone's okay. Uh, no final comments. I will call the question. All in favor. 
Thanks, everyone. And number eight is our consent reports. Uh, anyone have anything they want to pull out of uh, 8.1 or 8.2 to discuss separately? Seeing no, so I'll read the recommendation is that all items listed under the consent report section of the agenda tonight be accepted as presented. And that includes the information package and staff report 90-2021, our financial report for August. Could I have a mover, please? Moved by Councilor Ostrander, seconded by Councilor Young. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. Uh, nine committee reports, uh, nothing this evening. Uh, 10 mayor's portion this evening. Uh, don't really have a, a lot I want to get into tonight. I, I keep things moving along. I just did want to note uh, the farmers and uh, crafters market. Uh, really excellent work down there by staff. Uh, they've, they've really got a, a nice atmosphere going. Uh, you're not seeing like massive crowds down there, but people are stopping and they are buying. I, I spent a couple hours there in the Wednesday night market uh, just this past Wednesday. Uh, great, uh, great entertainment down there. Good steady flow of traffic. And uh, like I say the vendors are selling other wares. So it's great to see that that happening. I think, uh, you know, we've got a ways to go to fully revive the farmers and uh, farmers in the crafters market down there, but it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really come a long way, even in the, uh, I think two months or less since it's been revived. So I just, uh, kudos to, uh, uh, to staff for, for getting that going. Uh, Justin, I think is taking the lead on that and Dana has been involved as well. So it's just really nice to see. It's a, a, a really nice, uh, nice spot to visit on uh, those Saturdays and the Wednesday nights have been, uh, the Wednesday nights have actually been really, uh, really well received. And I just did want to mention uh, the, uh, the the Folk Fest did attend that uh, weekend before last. Great weather for it uh, uh, for it this year. Uh, uh, so excellent, uh, excellent uh, turnout. I think there were a sellout or maybe uh, almost sellout. Maybe there were a couple of tickets left over, but it was pretty much filled all day. Some great entertainment, great acts, and. Uh, uh, George Tierney and his team did another uh, spectacular job with it. And he's already, he wants to talk about a longer range plan uh, with us, like a five-year plan to really uh, continue this and grow it into a, into a really good sized regional uh, festival. And uh, I think uh, we all should be very happy that uh, he's chosen Prescott for the location here. And I think it's got uh, uh, just an incredible amount of potential. So I just did want to mention those, uh, those two items uh, tonight. And as I did note, uh, joint services is, uh, is tomorrow and I'll have a report back on that, that uh, uh, homelessness uh, housing uh, item that uh, I came up earlier. I'll let everyone know where, where we were with that uh, at our next meeting. Uh, so I'll move along then tonight and uh, go to 11 and outside boards, uh, committees and commissions and uh, start, of course, with Councilor Burton. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, the ARENA Fundraising Committee is going to be meeting uh, tomorrow night. So we just we wanted to let everybody know we are still accepting donations. And uh, thanks to the individuals and businesses that have stepped up and helped our community um, really shows uh, people are wanting that rink put up yesterday. <laughs> But have a, have a have a drive by. There's lots of action happening at the at the site right now, and uh, things are moving along. So, with that, that's it for me. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks very much. And uh, we end again the specifics, of course. But the number of sizable donations that have come in, even in the recent weeks, from businesses and individuals all over the area, it's really inspiring. People are really uh, backing uh, this, this great project. Uh, Councillor Jasmine, please. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, I just wanted to echo a couple of your comments. The, um, I attended the Folk Fest as well. And although I, I, you know, saw a few familiar faces, I think it brings a lot of people into, into our town. Um, and so, uh, as you said, um, I'm grateful to have it uh, being hosted here in Prescott. And I want to also thank the BIA and the Prescott town staff for uh, making our downtown so lively on Wednesday late afternoon and into the evening, as well as Saturday mornings with the, especially with the live entertainment on, on, uh, it's just, it just makes it so festive. So yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Jansman, uh, Councilor McConnell, please. Thank you, Mayor Todd. On uh, Saturday morning in the rain, I had the pleasure of attending the opening of the company museum, I guess you would call it, at Port Alano. Um, 
being a student of history, I, I lived here for a long time, like yourself, as you know, and I've watched Prescott change. I've watched that area of town change, and uh, it was quite interesting to see some of the pictures and stories on the wall that uh, provided some information that I wasn't aware of. Um, for example, I didn't realize that Elliott's had owned the building at one time. That's the Elliott's of Elliott's Lumber were Portolano, and previous to that, officials were. Um, there were some interesting pictures, historical information that I thought was, was quite interesting. And um, despite the rain and the tight conditions, um, I thought it was an interesting event. And my congratulations to Portolano for uh, doing that type of thing. It's, um, it's always good to showcase our history wherever we can, especially if you happen to be in a, a historic building. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor McConnell. Uh, uh, Councilor Ostrander, please. Sorry, getting mixed up. Thank you, I Worship. <clears throat> um, just a, a point of interest is uh, CN are uh, coming through tomorrow, or, or they, maybe they're through now with their uh, tra uh, rail car that does their training. It's kind of like a, a classroom on, uh, uh, in a train car. Um, they're stopping here tomorrow night and our uh, fire department, their normal training night of Tuesday, uh, they're going to go up to the, um, the Sophia Street uh, crossing there. Um, the car is going to be up there and they're going to, uh, uh, CN personnel are going to put them through some, uh, some points of interest of their training that they do. Uh, I take it on the heels of, uh, of our incident we had here is probably uh, one of the motivators for sure. So it's, uh, it's good to see the interaction with uh, the other agencies uh, when we get the chance. Um, that's about it for me, other than the uh, AGM of uh, Connect Youth took place last week and uh, uh, they're in good shape for the future by the looks of things. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ostrander. Uh, Councillor Shankar, please. Oh, you're muted, Gory. So sorry. Goodness. Oh, okay. I laugh at everyone else that that happens to. Now <laughs> it's happened to me. Um, I'll just be short and sweet. I do have that fundraising committee that I will be joining with uh, Mike and Le uh, Leanne. And uh, I also was at the Portolano Museum. You know, great idea. Kudos to them to generate traffic, maybe even generate some traffic off the road if they can get a sign. Um, Learned a few things that I didn't know. Uh, met a few people. It, it's it's a real interesting spot. I've been there many times, but um, you know, there, there's some neat things in there and the warehouse and, and everything. So it, it was good to attend. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gory. Uh, Councilor Young, please. Thank you, Brett. I'm sorry that I didn't get to Port Atlanta on Saturday because I was looking forward to seeing what Sandra had done with many of the fixtures that she bought from my store when I closed up. So uh, ah. I will be getting up there, but uh, I didn't make it on Saturday. I did attend the uh, virtually the St. Lawrence Lodge Board of Management. Uh, we reviewed some of our major projects, which um, have just begun, uh, some are about to begin and um, uh, we're watching our, our budget carefully. We're um, projecting a small deficit. So we're trying to see where we can cut back on expenses for the next four months to see if we can reduce that. That's all I have to report from that meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Ray. And uh, thanks everyone uh, for the updates uh, this evening. Uh, so I'll move on to uh, item 12. We do have a number of reports under uh, the staff uh, portion of uh, the agenda tonight. Starts off at 12.1, that's staff report 91-2021. Uh, that's our winter ice skating activities. Our recommendation is that council direct staff to proceed with winter ice skating activities as outlined in this staff report 91-2021. Could I ask for a mover, please? 
moved by Councilor McConnell, seconded by Councilor Burton. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nathan uh, to go through the report. Some interesting uh, potential tweaks for ice skating uh, this year in town. Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir, uh, through your Mayor Todd. Um, yeah, so we wanted to come back to, uh, to Council this year with an update on what we could do with some of the ice skating opportunities in the town. Um, so, you know, we recognize that uh, you know, we're still in a, a pandemic and, and mental health is still uh, a vital thing for people to be uh, to work to be working on, especially in the winter months as we have shorter sunlight uh, during the days. So we want to improve upon what we did last year. Um, so we did have the hockey rink up by the uh, <clears throat> by the ball fields in the operations uh, uh, building. Sorry, excuse me, up uh, on Sophia, and um, and we we did experience some uh, some good uh, feedback from what what we did there, and we had. Uh, the skating rink um, for the hockey, sorry, the hockey, and then we had a separate skating rink, so there was no conflicts between people who want to skate and people who want to play hockey, um, as that's an important thing um, to ensure that you have in place. Um, so the other thing that happened during the, uh, so now that we've kicked off the new arena, one of the first items that was taken care of as part of the construction was the demolition of the small ball field building. And unfortunately, that's where the power was fed from to the lights that we utilized in the evenings for the uh, outdoor rink last year. Um, so as, as that came down, we, we, we lost our opportunity for lighting, uh, in the evenings. And, um, <clears throat> the other thing that I did find last year, it's that, that area is a bit constrained for parking. They, everybody's kind of parking on the road and it's a narrow road, uh, by the operations building. Um, so it's kind of another thing that we, we kind of observed last year. Um, so a couple of things we'd like to do this year. One is ice skating on the Harbor. And that's something that I think has done, but been done in the past. Um, I'm not sure how far back when, but um, I think uh, I think it has been done in the past and certainly something that I've heard people talking about. Um, and we had a great example of a successful um, <clears throat> skating on natural ice in the in Brockville at the uh, at the harbor in Brockville last year. And I think there's a um, um, I personally went down there a few times. and It was a great experience. And uh, there's always lots of people down there. Um, so in that set up there was lots of room for people to skate there was you know the docks were basically little places for people to to sit down and put their skates on um and even like the kids would kind of go in and out of the the docks as well um and of course the Rideau Canal is another great example of natural ice um every year so we're proposing that uh, a portion of the Prescott Harbor be prepared for ice skating this year um and that uh, the main skating areas shown on the sketch in the uh, in the report would be where H dock was taken out of last year um, and the area would be about 100 feet by 60 feet, so almost the size of the, the hockey rink that we would set up, but this would be mainly for skating. Um, and uh, the actual size would kind of be dependent on how the winter goes. If we have a nice cold winter, I think we could expand that area maybe over to some of the other docks, um, or at least the one beside it. Um, but again, that's something we'll have to see uh, how the weather fares out. Um, so if it, and then the other thing is we'll have some natural lighting there or some, sorry, some lighting from the marina uh, lights that are there. And then, um, if we needed some more lights, we could do some temporary, uh, solar lights potentially, or with lots of power down there as well. So we could also, uh, plug in some, some led lights as well. So if ice skating was permitted in the Harbor, we would, uh, we would take all the safety precautions necessary for, to ensure that this is the safest, uh, practice possible through, you know, going through the details of inf infrastructure, health and safety associations, uh, best practices for um, building and working safely on ice covers in Ontario. So this is what Brockville followed last year. Um, and they had a, a, a full pattern of, of where the augered holes were going to be. They'd measure the ice thickness at the appropriate intervals. Um, I think at that point it was daily, which seems reasonable to me. Um, so we'd follow all precautions that, uh, that are spelled out in that to ensure that, uh, that we do it in a very safe manner. And also, um, as far as the snow removal, we would make sure that we only do that with the appropriate weight of machinery. Uh, so if it's just a, a small snow blower, that's what it will be. And if the ice is thick enough to permit uh, potentially the utility vehicle with the plow, we would do that. Um, and then we would barricade off the areas that, you know, where we didn't want, we wouldn't want people to go where it was unsafe. We'd make sure those were barricaded off as well um, to ensure people knew where the safe skating areas were and then the, the not as safe skating areas. Um, the other things that we do, I think in the winter, we do observe people ice fishing down there. And typically that does, I believe, tend to be on the, on the east side of the harbor. Um, so the skating would be on the, on the western side. So I think we'd see a natural separation there between the two activities. Uh, the other thing that uh, we, 
discussed a little bit of staff last year, but we're really, you know, we have a couple staff that are very keen to try this out as a skating path um, that I think would really add a lot of uh, kind of flavor to the ice skating for the year. And um, so we're thinking this would be on the east side of the pavilion, the Rody Pavilion, and it would be two to 300 meters in length. Um, we would use the pavilion as a place that's covered to put your skates on. And then we'd have a little skating area basically from there into a, sort of a, a almost a figure eight. Um, and then there's little spots that are natural low spots within the area that we're looking at. And those would be, uh, we try and turn those into little skating areas as well. Cause let's be, it, as soon as you have a natural low spot, it's so, you know, so much easier to, to make ice. Um, and um, the other thing that's nice about this, we would also add lights down there um, to ensure it's lit for the evening skating. And then there's plenty of parking as well, which, uh, which also, um, you know, adds to the ease and the, the enjoyment of people using it. So the other opportunity here is that we could potentially have opportunities to build on some tourism uh, events if we did get a nice winter and some good ice um, to let, uh, you know, to promote the picturesque uh, beauty of the St. Lawrence and, 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 you know, and Prescott along the river. It is so nice in the, in the wintertime as well as the summer. Um, and then the third thing that we'd like to do is continue to build the hockey rink. And we would put a, uh, uh, this year we want to try putting a, uh, a tarp underneath of it and, uh, we're looking at other locations besides down, like, so we wouldn't go back where we were last year and then not down by the, uh, the waterfront. We want to put it in a different spot in town. So that there's another opportunity for people to skate throughout the town. So the two places we've kind of looked at are Fairways uh, Park and Sarah Spencer Park. And then, uh, you know, looking between, you know, the watering and the parking and, and the, the local, um, you know, where it is kind of located within the, the different regions of the residences as well. And then uh, we would, also get some lighting from the streets. And then if we needed some more lighting, we could probably do some temporary lighting as well for the evenings. Um, so there's quite a few extra items there that uh, we believe will add a lot of value to the people of Prescott for the winter time. And there's a couple images of the skating path and the, uh, the Harbor Ice Skating Area for your viewing as well. That's it, thank you. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Nathan. Uh, open it up for our comments, questions. Start off with Councilor Shankar, please. Uh, Nathan, I think this is a really, really good idea. Uh, I'm uh, a big fan of uh, the skating path. I think that's fantastic use of the pavilion and uh, and our and our waterfront. You know, like hopefully it'll be cold enough this winter that we can have that there and with some lights and you know even even further to what we were talking about uh, with with putting up little buildings for vendors and stuff like that. Who knows? This this could be something that blossoms. Uh, skating down by the harbor, I think, is great, and I even like the idea of moving the the rink around. You know, that might make it easier for people to walk over if it's at Sarah Spencer Park. A little easier than uh, getting out to the municipal building there, the town barn. Um, so yeah, great job. I really like this, and I, I think it's really really good for our citizens, and it's a, a tourist attraction as well. But first and foremost, it's great for everyone that lives in Prescott and the surrounding area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gory. Uh, Councilor Young, please. Thank you, Brad. I like the um, ice skating path as well. I think um, down the road, somebody might consider building a bonfire, cooking hot dogs and marshmallows and having a little fun day uh, on a Sunday or a Saturday or whatever, uh, it would promote, uh, family and, uh, young children. I like the, I like both ideas. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks very much, Ray. Uh, Councilor Burton, please. Thank you. Um, Mayor Todd, I love this idea. I think it's something different. Um, and I think, Something different is good these days because people are tired of being in their houses. They want to they want to participate in and have a different experience. Um, I would I would uh, promote Sarah Spencer Park with just the two schools around the corner. Um, that'd give uh, classes uh, an opportunity to um, you know go for a skate you know during one of their uh, one of their breaks. I love the idea of the path as well. And uh, what Councillor Young was saying about a bonfire and and getting some people, you know, together after a big skate and 
I think that's a fantastic idea. And, and maybe we can look at that down the road. But uh, I love the idea of the natural skating on, on the harbor as well. <laughs> I think uh, it's really going to attract uh, a lot of people this winter and get out and uh, be active. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, other comments, questions? Uh, Councillor Ostrander and then Councillor McConnell, please. Yeah, I think uh, Nathan and uh, the gang are up to a, a real good idea there. Um, our, uh, our, our rec areas in the summer are very popular if people just walk through them, if nothing else. Um, so why not make them useful in the, uh, in the winter weather if we can? Um, I realize not all age groups might tackle skating uh, on the harbor, but then again, they might, uh, you know, it might uh, re rejuvenate uh, some people and, and give them the incentive to uh, give it a try. It's a protected area there and uh, it should work quite well. So that along with uh, <clears throat> perhaps one of the, uh, the park areas for, uh, for the school kids and that might, uh, might be a great idea. So uh, pu push forward and we'll, uh, we'll see where it takes us. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Councilor McConnell, and then uh, back to Councilor Young, please. Thank you, Mary Todd. I'm 100% in favor of this. I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is, have, can we or have we reached out to the school boards? Because uh, when I was young, I went to Central Public School, which of course is not there, but well, it's still there, but it's a, a TROAJ school. And now, every year I was there, we maintained a rink on the field at the school. And I know we use the soccer fields at the high school. So I'm wondering if we could use the fields of one of the uh, local schools for a rink. Uh, that would enable the school kids, especially if it happened to be up on either the Wellington School or St. Mark's School, uh, two schools there to, to use that rink um, in the daytime or, or in the evening, um, there's usually parking around schools as well. So it might be worthwhile um, reaching out. As far as Sarah Spencer Park goes, that's really on two corners that are not good for parking. So I don't know if that'd be the greatest spot for a rink. But uh, anyway, I'd, I'd suggest uh, talking to the school board, see if something was possible there. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Uh, Nathan, any any consideration of that already, or has any contact been made? That's through you, Mayor Todd. No, no contact's been made, but um, uh, it's a good idea. Maybe it's, uh, it's something I'd probably discuss with uh, with Matthew um, before reaching out. That um, yeah, I'm just thinking. Is it is? I'm just wondering if there's complexities uh, of uh, the town maintaining a, a thing that's in operation on a town, on a school property. Um, yeah, but, dealing with school board and property issues is never a yeah. fun task. So uh, it could be <laughs> challenging. They, they might want rental for the, spa the, for the space, <laughs> who would know? We've had that issue with South Grenville in the past with different things. Uh, I think I had uh, Councillor Young and then Councillor Burton again, please. Okay, Leanne. How okay, about, Ray. <laughs> how about you and I and the rest of council set up a bonfire and hot dogs and everything on family day? What is that? The second second Monday in February, and uh, we could uh, we could buy the hot dogs and the hot chocolate and all of that and accept donations to the rink uh, from the people who participate. Absolutely. All right, you're on. Okay. <laughs> Probably right on Valentine's Day. I think that's the 14th. If I is it the same day? Correct. Yeah, that's uh, it's usually uh, it's usually the second Monday, so that would be Valentine's Day, and that 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 works too. <laughs> Actually, well, sure. it's, Leanne, it's, it's hey, Leanne and I can uh, serve hot dogs to Lee and Nancy, and he'll treat her to a, an, an afternoon out. Just make sure he calls her Nancy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Maybe, we could have our, Maybe we could have our Christmas tree uh, bonfire that day. You know, we, that, that would work too. Yeah. Uh, Leanne? 
Thank you. Um, I did want to comment what uh, Lee mentioned before about having it at uh, a school. Um, I know it's going to be a, a big issue. It's a liability issue. Uh, they don't let the kids on the playground when it is icy. So I don't think that they would go for a uh, rink on their playgrounds, but uh, you know, it's definitely worth a try, but um, I've been involved in uh, the schools for many years and I don't think that uh, they're willing to go down that path, but uh, that's my two cents, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, any uh, further comments? Uh, only quick one I would add is an agreement with, I think Sarah Spencer's, it's a younger neighborhood than around fairways, I, I think, and no, uh, no disrespect to people living in and around uh, uh, fairways, but it seems to be a little bit of an older neighborhood in some ways, a lot of kids in the North End, and be nice to have it there. Parking could be a potential issue, but I think the majority would be walking to, to this there as well. So I think that could be the best location. But I, I do like the idea of at least contacting the schools and whether you it, whether it's on the site or not, but promoting through them and making sure that, uh, you know, that that's that's an option for the kids. And, but, and it's not like it's not going to get through the neighborhoods anyways, but it's it's still always good to let them know what's happening. And anyway, they may be able to even work it into their own curriculum or phys ed. Is that that's certainly possible? And it'd be easier for them because the liability is sort of somebody else's at that point, but uh, maybe we don't want to go down that road. Uh, so anyways, if there's no further uh, discussion, I will uh, call the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. And 12.2 uh, is staff report 92-2021 uh, 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 project updates where we are in the capital uh, works. Uh, Matt does have a uh, little report here. And uh, Mr. Armstrong, you want to just whip through that quickly and just give us an update on those uh, key projects and what the status is as of uh, tonight. Certainly. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So Dibble Street East is coming right along. It will uh, be the part from Van Conan to uh, Boundary will be completed. Um, uh, by the end of the month, and then we'll be moving forward with Edward Street to Van Conant uh, next year. Dog Park uh, is uh, uh, up and running, and uh, it's finally just there. There have been a, a few um, uh, accoutrements, or uh, I guess you could say, in terms of uh, some agility items, uh, benches, uh, watering station, that sort of thing. And uh, we are looking at uh, solar lights to uh, to be there for the uh, more winter months and being able to use it into the evening. Uh, the dock evaluation. So we do have uh, Keyhoe uh, Marine Construction coming in at the end of October uh, to look at all of the docks. We know we have to replace H dock, but we do want to know which one is the, the next most pressing one so that we can issue the uh, RFP this fall and then they'll both be floated in uh, next spring. Uh, pothole repairs will be uh, using the new method that uh, that we mentioned earlier this year and that will occur uh, this October. Uh, museum renovations are coming along, the new HVAC and dehumidifiers in place, the new uh, front door is uh, installed, window replacements are being arranged and uh, the internal renovations are nearing completion. We will be back uh, at our next meeting uh, with a, a more full detailed report on the actual displays and the activation of the collection. Uh, Non-motorized vessel uh, dock uh, has been in place for a, a few weeks now, and uh, it seems to be going well. Shade structures will be installed uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, in terms of the poles, we will um, uh, test the, the sage sales, shade sails, and then uh, be able to uh, take them down before the, uh, the winter months come, and then put them up uh, brand new for the, the spring. Installation of solar lighting along Heritage Path, uh, we sent all of our information to Parks Canada. We're just waiting uh, for them to uh, finish their due, due diligence and for the approval. Uh, repairs to the waterfront trail. We've uh, uh, completed repairs to one section by uh, removing the asphalt, putting down gravel, putting down a bonding agent. And as you will remember, we wanted to let that sit for a year to see uh, how it was going to, uh, to move and react uh, because that's, I believe, uh, part that's sitting on a floating dock underneath. And so uh, there is quite a bit of movement there. So see exactly yeah, how that comes along. We're at the beach. Um, we're just uh, confirming the length of the, uh, the fence uh, so that we can then uh, match that to the size of the, uh, the pictures. And then the regional transportation pilot has been running uh, for about four or five weeks now. 
and uh, we're happy to say that we had our highest day last uh, Thursday of 18 people uh, that rode the bus uh, in the course of the day, and we're uh, continuing to uh, to market that and uh, and grow that. So if you remember, our goal is 20 to 25 people, or anywhere from 20 to 30, uh, running each day, and uh, we're averaging anywhere from 10 to 14 right now, and a high of 18. And we were certainly uh, on our way to, to getting to where we need to go. So uh, very happy to be able to report that. And, uh, and that's the updates at this point. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Open it up, comments, uh, questions uh, from members of council. Uh, Councilor Burton, please. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, I also wanted to thank town staff um, for putting the pamphlets near the bus station. Um, I mentioned that um, seniors don't necessarily have a phone and if they can pick up a pamphlet to tell them what time the bus stops in certain spots, that is very helpful. So um, they're all around town. So you can just go to the bus stop and pull out one of those pamphlets and uh, you'll know when to take the bus and, and where. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Burton. Uh, other comments that I see another hand go up or Councillor Shankar, please. And then Councillor McConnell. Um, yes, thank you. Matthew, I just wanna say thank you for this report. It's nice, it's short and sweet, but it, it hits all the, all the work that we're doing. Uh, it, it helps us as council because when people ask us what's going on with the mural at the beach, we can, we can tell them that we know now we know or you know, something like the solar lights, which I've been promoting as much as possible on the Heritage Trail. Now I know it's, we're just waiting for Parks Canada. So it's very helpful and I appreciate the, the work put into it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Shankar. Uh, Councilor McConnell, please. Oh, thanks, Mayor Todd. A couple of things. The solar lights on the path east of the marina, it just occurred to me when we were talking about that. I, I walk on there, I know you do too. Uh, our town staff, when they plow that in the winter, plow it quite wide, uh, wider than the pathway, because when the snow has a tendency to melt, if they don't, it floods the pathway. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about these solar lights that are going to be put in. Uh, that could interfere with the plowing if they don't take into that consideration. So um, I guess maybe... They should have a good look at actually where this solar lighting is going to go. Uh, the other thing is the um, docks in the marina. Uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I've been talking about maintenance-free docks now every time this subject has come up for several years. I noticed uh, Matthew has mentioned uh, Mr. Kehoe, which is essentially the same type of docking that's in there now. I would like us to get a quote on the maintenance free that is either aluminum stainless steel i forget what the stuff actually is with the uh, plastic top on it and um, i would not like to see anything go ahead in the marina until we have that quote and find out what the difference is in pricing and i would be prepared to make a motion to that effect if um, it's necessary Uh, thanks uh, very much, Lee. I, I think it's that is the assumption based on the on the report that uh, nothing's going to happen until we get the count the the report back in November. Uh, so then we'll we'll see that. But Matt, Nathan, uh, we're absolutely that this is being an option being being it's going to be considered in that report. Correct. I think I remember us discussing this and the the need to move away from the wood down there uh, if if at all possible. Absolutely. So our intention is to create a request for proposal. And with that, it would be kind of a little bit of a, uh, a mix and match type situation. So we would ask, you know, if for the pontoons to be in steel, what would it cost? If they're going to be in stainless steel, what would it cost? If it's going to be in aluminum, what would it cost? What would it cost for um, uh, just your traditional uh, uh, pressure treated, but then what would it cost for treks or some other type of uh, non-maintenance uh, type uh, decking system? So we really want to provide the opportunity for um, as many bidders as possible to, to come in with ideas. And that way, we, when we go back to council for approval on uh, whichever docks need to uh, be replaced, that um, 
when we come back and get the uh, RFPs that we'll come back to council and say, okay, so if, if we go with, let's say, steel pontoons, but here's the, the plastic decking, and uh, this is how much it's going to cost versus the absolute uh, least amount of cost by highest amount of maintenance. And so that way we can balance the two off and allow council uh, to make that decision on ultimately uh, what is the best option going forward. Thanks very much, Matt. Uh, Lee, any follow-ups on that? No, that sounds exactly what I wanted to hear. So uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, I guess uh, maybe it just wasn't explained as well in the information that we got. Thank you. Uh, did I have anyone else uh, with a hand up there? Any other comments on the report? Uh, just had one myself, just in the museum renovations and uh, I will obviously get something uh, more back in, uh, in two weeks uh, with the museum renovations. Has everyone seen that the, the door has been uh, replaced? Uh, there's been some work happening inside. I did happen to talk to Fraser Lassinger, who is uh, still heading that up for us. Uh, he's got a couple of uh, partners as well uh, with, uh, with, with uh, Heritage here locally that have been very interested as well. And uh, Fraser has uh, suggested that we, we aim for a, an opening on uh, for Founders Day this year and from and discussions with staff that did seem uh, very doable. Uh, it does seem to be, uh, uh, be a, a good date from Fraser's perspective with regards to uh, moving the collection in there. That said, we can't promise it. Uh, right now there's, there's issues with supply chain across the board with almost everything as we've, we've all noted. So we just gotta make sure that we're, we're able to uh, source all the materials for the inside, but that is, sort of what we're looking at there for, for a date uh, for, the, for the actual opening of the museum. It is starting to really move along now, but we'll have the full report back on October 18th. But I did want to mention that because there has been a lot of interest in that. I know that was a subject of some of the discussions in and around the Porto Auto opening on, on Saturday. Uh, the fact that we don't have a museum active downtown right now. And as much as I've told people it's on the way, I think there are some that uh, just, just want to believe it's not, not happening. And well, it is happening and it's really just been delayed by COVID. So we are looking at Founders Day this year as a, a likely uh, or possible anyways, grand opening, but we'll know more as we bring this back on the 18th. Uh, any, so I, I think that's, uh, that, that's all. Oh, and the other thing, the, the regional transit pilot, uh, Matt, when are we going to bring that back? I mean, it, we're going to have something in November, but when are we going to be at the point where we have to make a decision on, because like we, the, the pilot project is, uh, it, it was six months, correct? That's correct. So it runs to the end of March. So my intention is to bring it forward in January. We'll have uh, about three months worth of data at that point. Uh, understand um, exactly what the next steps would be. So that way we can start contacting the provincial government uh, to understand the process for um, provincial gas tax for transit. Yeah, I just uh, that I, I, I just would be concerned that uh, it's probably as early as we can do it, given the fact we need writer writer data and everything. But it's just I I wonder what how complicated that would be, and I would hate to get to the point where we do the six months and we have to uh, suspend the service for a little while while we figure out exactly what the costs are with regards, particularly to the province. So the earlier we can get information on, uh, uh, I, think, I think as long as we operate the system, uh, we qualify for the funding. I don't think they get into, or correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they get into sustainability or, or so forth. I think it's just the operations of a transit system, is it not? Yeah, correct. And so we, we need to make sure that we qualify um, for, for different aspects of it. Um, because we're, we're already using a public service provider, then uh, certainly uh, those types of questions go away. But uh, then there's just uh, also just making sure what the application process is, what the approval process is, and uh, if there's any uh, hiccups along the way. Guessing Brockville would have to lead that because this is really an expansion of Brockville Transit at its core, would it, would it not? I mean, in terms of the application to the province? So it would be up to the three other municipalities, the three partner municipalities, because um, Brockville already gets provincial uh, tax funding. Yeah. So it's by municipality. And so um, in that case, you have to, uh, each separate municipality has to apply and, uh, and take that uh, forward. But all be the same uh, exact uh, application and uh, just changing the name. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, just, just that was my only concern about that, that we make sure we have uh, everything in because it's going to be a bit of a, 
I'm guessing there'll be some negotiations and some real political discussions with at least one of the partners, if not if not both of them. And uh, I also I wonder if it, if it does work that way, do we have to set up actually a separate transit company uh, with the three of us that that would tie into Brockville rather than just an expansion of Brockville Transit? But at any rate, it's just fi finer points. But I, I just wanted to mention that because I want to make sure that we're just on, on top of it for and I, and I know you are, but I just wanted to to hear it for the public as well, because we've really got to encourage people to use uh, use that system. I think we can get the numbers much higher. Ray actually had a good comment the other day about how someone could actually get on in Prescott, go to the north end, and then catch it on the way back and ride it right back down if they wanted to do a grocery uh, uh, do a grocery run. So there's there's actually options that people could take that would really make running errands convenient without a without a vehicle right within town. So I, I don't know if we've promoted anything like that specifically, but it's maybe not a bad thing to look at to, to encourage more ridership, like with Leanne mentioned, with some older people that don't know the full information and you know how they can get from point A to point B and home again really, really quickly for uh, that minimal fee. So anyways, all good stuff. Any further comments on, uh, on that report? Uh, seeing none, so we will move on. That was just uh, for information purposes. Uh, and we are into a 12.3. This one is for information purposes as well. It's staff report 93-2021. This is uh, uh, all of the bylaws that we're looking at relating to property standards, essentially property standards bylaw, vacant buildings, registry bylaw, and the administrative monetary penalties, the uh, AMP system we're looking at, that bylaw. Uh, brought back for information again tonight. Sean, did you have anything you wanted to uh, lead into here? You're really just looking for... Uh, any advice, any comments uh, as we, we move towards bringing this back, correct? Yeah, that's uh, correct, Your uh, your Worship. And and uh, I've got about comments from about half the uh, councillors now. I would appreciate if everyone could reach out to me, even if it's just to say that they have no concerns. Um, we, we're working towards it. I've also been dealing with some members of the public that have had ongoing uh, issues in their neighborhood and they are uh, thankful that at least we're giving it a shot at trying to find some some better solutions because they feel anyways the current uh, bylaws are no longer serving them uh, in terms of uh, dealing with problems effectively so thanks very much uh, mr. Merriman open it up for members of council any comments questions on this this evening Councilor young please Thank you, Brett. I'll give you a couple of my comments now, um, Sean. First of all, the $1,000 charge uh, for registering. Um, I'm still concerned that that's a little high. Um, I'm sure you've taken it from other bylaws, but I have that comment. And um, then when it gets to the last page, when we're talking about the uh, appeal process, where it goes to uh, the CAO or clerk if, if the um, landowner is not happy, uh, that's fine. I think that should be uh, free. But I'm wondering if, it, if they take, decide to take the next step and go to a hearing board, can we charge them for that? And I'm, I'm talking, you know, several hundred dollars I, I would rather discourage them doing that if it's just going to waste everybody's time. But if uh, obviously if it's a, a serious matter with them, um, then they'll keep going. Um, the last comment was with regard to derelict or inoperable vehicles. In the past, I believe we've taken the course where if the vehicle does not have a current license plate on it with the current year on the license plate. Uh, that is when it's considered derelict or inoperable. Those are my three comments. Ray, that takes in all three of my vehicles because I haven't been able to get them renewed. Well, COVID won't be on forever, so it, it will happen. Yeah, that, that is one, one issue right now. A lot of people uh, haven't uh, put the new stickers on for the last year, two or two years. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Ray, uh, for your comments. Any Anyone else uh, this evening, Any uh, have any observations or recommendations for uh, Mr. Merriman? 
Okay, seeing seeing none, uh, I don't have anything myself. I've sh I shared uh, a few things in the last uh, meetings. Uh, I do have a little, I, I, I'll say I've got some of the same concerns about that $1,000 fee, but I keep coming back around to the fact that we have had some significant issues with some long-standing vacant properties, and I, I don't mind having a little added teeth to that, so people don't let the let the buildings uh, sit around and uh, the thousand bucks is uh, maybe just enough of an incentive for someone to uh, to, to not allow that to happen. And I, and I say that as someone who's lived across from an empty house that's been empty for, I don't know, 25, 28 years or whatever it is now. So then there are a number of those. There's, there are a couple in town that uh, one one's actually being worked on on Henry Street right now, uh, but that was, was sitting vacant for quite some time as well and was an issue to that neighborhood. So I don't really have a, a concern with, with, with that number, although I can understand what Ray's getting at with it too. Ray? Well, you know, my feelings, Brett, is there is a difference between somebody mm -hmm. with a short term, be it longer than six months, as opposed to somebody who's been uh, uh, not interested in renting their building or fixing up their building for years. So that's that's where I, I get concerned. Yeah, maybe like I think we, we did mention this, maybe a scale or something. So it's it's affordable in the beginning. But once you get beyond a, a year or two years or whatever that, that date may be, then I would be happy to really crank it up, to be honest. And I wouldn't be looking at a thousand. I'd be looking at more like five because yeah. if, if that's if that's doable, because we can't have people just walking away from houses in the middle of town. They, they become safety hazards. With uh, 440 Dibble across from me, I mean, with numerous fires, we had two young children that were involved in the one fire. They almost lost their lives that night. I mean, th there are real hazards here as well. And it, it just, it really can't be allowed. So I, I, I really applaud Sean for getting this for uh, together for us because we, however we decide on what the numbers are in the end of the, the penalties and so forth and the registration fees, it's a it's gonna be a good bylaw. However, we, we, we implement it at the very end. Uh, any, other, uh, any other comments before we move on tonight? Okay, thanks everyone. So uh, that, uh, and of course, as always, you can email or uh, call Sean with other comments, uh, whatever, whatever is necessary uh, there to uh, move these forward. And they'll be back to us uh, very shortly for a uh, final uh, passage. Uh, so that moves us through uh, staff reports tonight, 13 resolutions, nothing under resolutions, uh, 14 under bylaws. We do have under 14.1, a site plan agreement for 220 Churchill. Recommendation is that bylaw 43-2021 being a bylaw to authorize a site plan agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Prescott and Grant Castle Corporation be read and passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, and sealed by the seal of the corporation. Could I ask for a mover, please? Moved by Councilor McConnell, seconded by uh, Councilor Young. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, uh, any, any comments here just to refresh our memories and uh, let people know at home what we're uh, voting on here this evening for the site plan? So this is the card lock um, facility that would be at 220 Churchill. Um, it was approved at uh, last uh, meeting and uh, on September 20th. And then this is the approval of the uh, actual uh, entering into the bylaw and agreement with the uh, proponent. So uh, very simple. The building that's currently there will be torn down a, uh, a non- uh, attended card lock facility will be uh, constructed in its place and uh, with the major customer being a local uh, transportation company and uh, then uh, will allow for further um, uh, renovation and uh, reimagining of the, the current McEwen gas bar on Edward. And the timeline on that, uh, Matt, when will we, uh, they're, they're moving pretty quickly now, I believe. Yeah. So I believe uh, they're hoping to get this uh, completed this year uh, in terms of the card lock, and then they'll be back to us uh, uh, early next year for the uh, the other uh, facility. Great, thank you very much. Uh, open it up for comments, questions, any discussion this evening on uh, uh, the site plan agreement by law. Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question, all in favor. Motion is carried, thanks everyone. Uh, so under new business tonight, as I mentioned uh, off the top, I did want to raise this because there's been a, I, I've been actually been contacted by a number of citizens and it did become a sort of a thing on one of the Facebook uh, message groups. Uh, and it just basically goes, goes to uh, painting a crosswalk in recognition of uh, Indigenous peoples here in town, obviously it connects with uh, the residential schools uh, uh, 
the horrific news that we, we've heard more and more about over this, this past year. It would connect, of course, to what we did uh, last week to honor that first national day for truth and reconciliation. Essentially, if you, you haven't uh, seen any news coverage of it, uh, I think of three examples, uh, Timmins, Coburg, and uh, Gananoque uh, did paint crosswalks uh, orange. Uh, with uh, with some some added accoutrements as well, I think feathers is is the main one uh, that uh, you, you can see on what's what's happening uh, with what they did up in Timmins. So a lot of people uh, do seem very interested in this, and I did note that when Gananoque did it, I sort of thought we might get a request on it. It, it really does seem, from my own perspective, it seems like something that we we should embrace. I'd I'd, I'd like to, to I would support it for sure. So I, I, I talked to uh, Mr. Armstrong last week about it, and he did uh, come back. They called a couple of communities, and, and here's where it just gets gets a little a little more interesting: is that the cost came back a little bit higher than I than I would have expected. And I'll let Matt explain like why, as we had a talk right before the meeting. Uh, but uh, the cost for this and what we were looking at doing would be one of the crosswalks in the north end on Edward Street. Uh, my suggestion would be the one by, by Tim Hortons, although we could look at the other one as well. But it's that one by Tim Hortons that we've, we've been looking at ideas to make it more visible uh, so that perhaps you know, this could, could really serve two purposes. It would make that crosswalk brighter and more visible uh, for, for drivers who blow through it all the time, actually, and it would also serve as, uh, of course, a, a nice uh, reminder of uh, the indigenous uh, roots of, of this region and uh, you know, what we're, we're trying to do right now to uh, recognize uh, the drive for truth and reconciliation. So anyways, Matt's cost, it was about $6,500 uh, to paint this for the first time, which is a lot more than I expected it would be to be very, very blunt. Uh, that said, I still would, would absolutely support this uh, and I would, I, would, I would love to do it as soon as possible actually, but maybe there are other options for the painting. Uh, but Matt was suggesting to go with uh, an external company with this uh, to, to make sure the first layer and the first, the first, the first painting is done really well. Uh, and uh, that's sort of the same approach we did take with the Pride Crosswalk, I believe, but, but the Pride Crosswalk was considerably less. It was probably roughly about half of uh, that, that dollar figure. So at any rate, I, I was hoping this would be something we could rally behind tonight, but then that, that cost did come up at the last moment. So anyways, that, those are all the facts as, as I'm aware of them. Well, I also, I did talk to Christine Sloan, who's obviously handled a lot of uh, projects with us in, in the past, uh, artistically, uh, the mural down, murals downtown and so forth. And she did agree in the weekend, if we were interested that the high school class could uh, work on something like a stencil, for example, uh, to help out with, uh, with, with, with this, uh, we would paint it. Uh, but uh, they could they could help out from that artistic perspective, and it'd be a great way to involve the the South Grenville uh, arts uh, classes. But Matt, do you want to just make comment because you did you did uh, do a little research on this for the costs and let everyone know what we're looking at here as a potential cost if we were to to go ahead with this with external painters? Certainly. So the uh, estimated cost we received the quote today was sixty five hundred and forty dollars plus tax. Um, obviously, this in this particular case, we're going across four lanes of traffic. And uh, it would require uh, two uh, applications of both the orange and the white uh, to make sure it gets uh, settled down. Uh, it's all subject to availability of paint. Uh, certainly that, uh, like everything else right now, uh, there are uh, shortages across uh, multiple sectors. And so, uh, so that would be uh, one thing that we'd have to take a look at. And really it would be uh, very similar to what Timmins and Coburg uh, have done, which is the uh, orange base with the uh, white feathers. So um, we, uh, we sent that off uh, to make sure that uh, then the vendor understood what we were looking for and um, that uh, we get the best possible price. So that uh, is kind of uh, the approach that we took and uh, we appreciate uh, our uh, vendor uh, getting back to us today to uh, to address this. And I want to thank Matt Matt for getting this done uh, so quickly. There there really was a real uh, push from other people, as of course September 30th did come up, and the the Facebook post did have I don't know, 300 plus or whatever likes, tons and tons of support. And uh, so I, I did I did promise I would bring it this evening because there is a a real push within the community. So I'll open it up for discussion. I apologize for bringing it like this, but this did all really come up within the last seven to 10 days. And it really does seem like a, a good project if we can uh, uh, agree on backing it. Uh, Councillor McConnell, Councillor Shankar, then Councillor Young, please. 
I think it's an excellent idea to acknowledge this um, situation, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. But I have to say, I think that is one poor place to be putting a, an orange painted crosswalk. I thought we should have learned our lesson when we did King Street East. Part of the reason that that would be so expensive is you've got four lanes of traffic there. It's, it's two lanes wider than it is on King Street East. You've got a lot of cars driving over it. Um, I don't see why you can't have a painted um, uh, what would I call the uh, a painted walkway as opposed to a painted drive across? I would say just off the top of my head, the um, the interlock at the foot of um, um, East Street, where you go down to the Marina Services mm -hmm. Building, that would be an excellent place to have something like that. Um, some place that is used a lot, that is not driven over, that is not going to take the abuse, and that is still uh, significant to the community. Um, I, I, I would be I would be in favor of doing that as opposed to painting it on the road where we've had, where we've had troubles before. Um, it would be certainly more cost effective. And um, I, I just think it would be a better idea. But I'm certainly in favor of doing something. Thanks very much, uh, Councilor McConnell. I apologize, who do I have next again? Councilor Young or? I think uh, Gory was ahead of me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gory, then, uh, then uh, Ray, please. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I do like the idea. I was a little, um, I just hearing it tonight on the cost. Uh, I was trying to think before I got a chance to speak, like how we could um, lower that cost, whether, it, and, and sorry, Matthew, did you say that's, that's an external company that's going to do all the work for us? That's correct. For yeah. 6,500? Because I thought maybe that um, the the hole back in, in the the pride crosswalk was the cost of the paint was was so much as all the different colors etc. But if it's it's only uh, one color and, and white, I, I was surprised it'd be sixty five hundred. And I mean, I, I don't know what the time frame is to get this done, but yeah, I think maybe a little discussion as to. Lee brings up a good a good point. You know, do we want to put it on a road? Do we want to put it on such a busy road that I hate to say it, but some idiot's gonna put a mark on it? You know, um, and then we're gonna create that whole bad publicity for the town again. So I really do like Lee's idea about putting it maybe on a, a walking path or, or, or something like that to, uh, to develop it. I just, I just can't think of where just yet. I'm sorry, Lee, I didn't catch where you said you wanted to put it. Well, it's not a where question of where, I, if I may, uh, it's not a question of where I wanted to put it. It's, it's just something that uh, popped into the top of my head. Uh, I suspect if we all gave it some thought, we could probably each come up with a half dozen different spots uh, where we could put it uh, that would be uh, noticeable. Well, certainly we want it noticeable and we want it durable. Um, you could even do the entrance into our new Marina or Marina Arena parking lot, but that's a couple years down the road. There's, there's any number of places you could put it that aren't going to be a four lane traffic wide that is, is going to take a lot of pounding. And as you mentioned, there's always somebody around that, that uh, has no common sense that is going to want to deface it. It doesn't matter what it is. And uh, we're going to be in the painting orange, especially when we don't have the paint every time it happens. Um, I, I see absolutely no reason why uh, uh, dignifying a walking path somewhere in a very noticeable location uh, wouldn't be a good idea. That's it's actually it's an excellent point. You've got the heritage pathway, 
you do have an area in and around Centennial as well. Uh, this was suggested uh, online because of the, the high visibility of the area. And uh, you know, I, I, I thought it was potentially a good idea as well, but we're, we're gonna run into potential issues with well, idiots, uh, no matter what we do with this. So it's, it's but but there is, I mean, we're, we're, we're already doing some work in the heritage pathway, maybe dedicate part of the heritage pathway. It's right along the St. Lawrence River, which was of course, you know, obviously well-traveled by indigenous peoples for, for many centuries. So maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's a, a better option that we could dedicate a, a section of one of the paths downtown to it that would get us away from some of the issues. And maybe we could, uh, you know, put up a, a, a plaque or something there as well, historical, uh, with the historical information about the indigenous uh, peoples that, you know, uh, the tracer heritage here. So there's definitely, yeah, that's, that's, that's another uh, real good, good option as well. I think I think I had I had Ray next, uh, Councilor Young, then Councilor Burton, please, then Councilor Councilor Jansman. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I was um, going to suggest uh, King Street as well, just to reduce the cost of, of the of the painting. I believe when the uh, the other crosswalk was painted, it was in the neighborhood of a couple thousand dollars, not not anywhere near six thousand dollars. So that was About one 30. comment. Pardon. About 38, I think, Matt. Was that what you to me? Okay. Um, but that included lots and lots and lots of extra paint, didn't it? So um, anyway, um, that was one comment. The other was uh, considering the temperature, uh, considering the availability of, of the orange, uh, this might, might be considered um, a, an option for next year's budget. That's my only other comment. I'm certain I'm not opposed to it. I will I will support it just where and when and whatever. Yeah, it's a t it is a tough time of year and uh, it's uh, obviously availability of the crew and so forth. But if we commit to doing something and maybe ask staff for some advice on some different areas and some costing in the next little bit, we can at least show we're, we're moving towards this as quick as possible. And I'd love to find a way to involve the South Grenville uh, because there are actually, there are, are some indigenous, indigenous students there as well, Christine mentioned. So any involvement like that of the community, I think we, we really should look for that here uh, because I, I think it just, it fosters that greater drive for truth and reconciliation. Uh, oh, Ray, did you have another comment for a good one? Just, I did, while you were talking, I did look up the Timmins crosswalk and it, it, it is quite attractive actually with the, the very large feathers going from one side to the other. Yeah, yeah, that is. And that's what Christine was looking at is that they were, they were, they're, they are prepared or uh, she is prepared to uh, do, uh, do stenciling for that. So if we were to do another location, we could probably bring the cost down Probably significantly, and uh, not that this is about cost uh, to me, because quite frankly, I, I think it's sort of the least we can do uh, to, to show our solidarity here. But uh, at the same time, it, it would help the community involvement, keep costs down, and we would avoid the possibility of, well, not completely avoid it, but we'd lessen the possibility of someone uh, doing uh, uh, burnouts and whatever on it. I apologize, Leanne, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, I think it's an excellent idea and I'm going to definitely support that. Um, we do have indigenous uh, relatives in our family. So um, that's really important to, to me. Um, I think we're setting us up for failure if we do put it at the crosswalk by the school, because quite often the kids will jolt out and um, that could be, it's a safety issue as well, but I could see that being messed up in the first week that it's there. I do like the idea of putting it on uh, maybe the Heritage Trail, maybe a couple different spots um, in a smaller uh, version of it, um, but a couple different spots in smaller versions, you know, just to dedicate that more of that path pathway. And I do like the idea of the plaque. I think that's important as well to educate some people on uh, Indigenous peoples. So um, I like the idea and I definitely going to support it. Um, time is of the essence. And I don't think, unfortunately, if the weather changes uh, quite drastically, we won't be able to get this done 
this year, but um, definitely we'll give staff some time to look for the paint and look for the appropriate spot that we can uh, we can do some uh, dedication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Burton. Uh, Councillor Jansman, please. Thanks, Mayor Todd. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share that I would be of support of this idea as well um, with the location to be determined, I guess. Um, uh, potential consideration is because I, I believe this area represents six different groups. Um, to maybe a little bit of what Leanne was saying, um, a little bit here and a little bit there, but that six of the, the, the um, maybe um, to each each different group, I don't know, and and I was thinking um, the entrance of going into our museum might be a location as well on the sidewalk entrance to the to, to the museum. Anyway, just my two cents. Thanks. Uh, excellent point about the museum, and uh, we should r remind everyone there when we did approve that museum, we did we did talk about uh, Indigenous heritage and uh, making sure that was well included. And of course, uh, Parks Canada, uh, who we've invited to uh, to partner on some of those museum displays. There's obviously a strong uh, Indigenous heritage uh, component of uh, uh, the displays at Fort Wellington, so we would tap into that as well. So. Uh, so it sounds like we've got pretty round, round, round uh, the table support. Mike, did you have a comment, please? Yeah, uh, just to make it unanimous, I, I think this is a great idea. And uh, I guess where to put it, given the various reasons and locations that we've discussed here, uh, might be the only point that we have to kind of get a, a, a common opinion on. So other than that, I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I think the... The orange color will stand out no matter where we put it. It's just a matter of uh, deciding that uh, where's the most opportune place to have it. That's all. Uh, so I'll just try and summarize everything that we've talked about. I'm wondering if there is a way we could, I mean, I'm, I'm fine if we have to do it next spring as well, but it is only the, the 4th of October. I do wonder if we could, uh, I, it sounds like we've got a lot of support for the idea of doing something along the river. We've got the heritage pathway. We've got Centennial. That's where most people in Prescott do their walking. We could always add stuff later. Is there a possibility we could direct staff to explore the costs? And I think at that point, we could get the high school uh, art uh, group involved and we could do the painting ourselves because we're not talking about uh, anything uh, too, too dramatic there with regards to, you know, four lanes of traffic and so forth. Uh, so if we could explore, say, those two options and direct staff to bring this back to us in two weeks, and the possibility could be that we could paint immediately afterwards. That doable? That something everyone would be, everyone would get behind? And if staff, is, if it's not doable or whatever, we'll know at our next meeting that we'll have to postpone it uh, to the spring. But that way, I think that captures what we've talked about tonight to, to move it to walking pass and then we can investigate the possibility. I'm, I'm sure uh, Fraser Lassinger would, uh, he, he helped design a lot of those uh, historical, the interpretive plaques downtown. We could do something else possibly with the involvement too. I'd love to see this of an indigenous uh, his, his, you know, historian in the area that would be able to help us uh, inform the plaques. And we could, so we could do something like two walking paths painted with the feathers and the uh, and the orange, say in uh, in Centennial and uh, and uh, and uh, the Heritage Pathway, that would capture a lot of people walk those pathways. It would be very very visible. Uh, Councilor McConnell, something you said quite some time ago just uh, struck a note with me. And as I've been sitting here listening to other councillors speak, I've heard the path east of the marina, and I call it the path east of the marina because I can never remember the full name of it. Um, when that was named, it was before I was on council, there were several names proposed. They couldn't decide on a name, so they just stuck them all together, which I always thought was a poor idea. But um, the west end of that path is a disaster. It uh, doesn't attach properly to the marina. It floods in the winter. You can't walk through it without getting your feet wet. It needs a rebuild. It needs a real good look at. There's a very large sign to the riverside right at the start of the path. The uh, front of it, of course, uh, illustrates that it is the Prescott 
or rather the Sandra Escalon Marina that we have gasoline and a couple other things. But the backside is just kind of a white painted eyesore. It, it would be an ideal spot for a large sign that would be very noticeable. I suggest that we look into doing a proper joining of that path to the marina, which is obviously not going to happen this year. But as you mentioned, it could be done for next year. We rename that path that nobody can remember the full name of something like a reconciliation path, something that's short, something that is easily remembered. And we put the orange crosswalk right where it starts with the back of that big white sign with a large um, uh, explanatory um, sign, which I'm sure Fraser would be glad to help us uh, design. I, I think that would be something that would be worthwhile. Uh, full agreement. My only concern with that, that, that's a much larger project if we're looking at repaving and so on. And I would just love to get the first phase of this through now, get the painting, uh, get it arranged, pick a location. I'd pick something right in the middle myself, but I would also do exactly what you're saying, Lee. I think that's a brilliant idea as phase two for next year. And then you officially open it next spring once that's done. But I, I'd, I'd love to see just as a, as a gesture too, that we we support this and begin, begin really moving forward this evening, because I, I am concerned in, in a lot of ways too. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, uh, a lot of the national attention has already moved off through, through the reconciliation. People aren't paying as much attention as they were even in, in, in the summer. You know, even, even had the prime minister go surfing at Tofino on, uh, on the 30th rather than be involved in any, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I, I don't like bringing in federal or even or provincial politics and this stuff, but I found that quite offensive. Like we did, we did more here in our community than, than it seemed like the prime minister did uh, that day. And, you know, maybe he's got more, more explanations for his actions, but it didn't look very good at any rate. So I, I just love to see us get behind something tonight and we'll just leave, let, let staff come back with it in a couple of weeks. If everyone's okay with that, we'll, we'll look at the downtown local options and then we'll see what staff comes back with. Uh, but I fully agree with everything you said, Lee. I think it, it's a great idea and there's been some graffiti. There's someone painted, uh, I think it's Garfield's face actually on the back of that that sign a year or so ago. And I, 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 it drives me nuts every time I see it there. That, that would be a perfect spot to, to, to really like centralize things like an interpretive plaque and so on. Uh, but I'd love to just, uh, if, if we're all in agreement, support this concept and ask staff to bring something back in two weeks. Is anyone willing to make that, that motion? We, we look at the downtown locations. So moved by uh, Councilor Shankar, second by Councilor McConnell. Uh, so we had, we we're all clear in the wording on that. It's just a direction of staff to uh, investigate the opportunities for painting a crosswalk, recognizing uh, Indigenous, uh, uh, Indigenous peoples. Uh, in, in the downtown, uh, looking primarily at uh, a Centennial Park and the Heritage Pathway. But if other options come up in that area, please bring them forward. Uh, so we're all good with that. Uh, I will call the motion then all in favor. Thanks, folks. Great, great discussion. And I look forward to uh, where we, we get on this in, uh, in two weeks time. And I, I apologize for bringing it the last minute, but there were a lot of people that really did, did, did want to see this move forward in it something that, well, obviously we all support the concept. So a uh, great discussion and th thanks everyone uh, for this good, uh, uh, good, uh, think good positive direction forward tonight. Uh, so anything else under new business uh, this evening? Anyone have anything to bring forward? Uh, seeing no uh, 16 notices of motion, any member of council have a notice of motion to bring forward? Uh, seeing no, we do have uh, three mayor's proclamations this evening. Uh, so starting off with, uh, this is for International Day of the Girl, and proclamation reads, uh, and the International Day of the Girl is October 11th, 2021. Uh, proclamation reads, whereas the United Nations has declared October 11th as International Day of the Girl, and whereas there is growing recognition around the globe that support for girls and equality is the key to healthy communities, and whereas the Day of the Girl is about highlighting, celebrating, discussing, and advancing girls' lives and opportunities across the globe, and whereas declarations of support raise awareness about the importance of the International Day of the Girl and the issues faced by girls, whereas organizations like Girls Inc. 
work with hundreds of girls every year to inspire them to be strong, smart, and bold leaders and advocates for equality so that girls can live, work, and be safe in their communities in the, futures, in the future. And whereas Girls Incorporated of Upper Canada focuses on the development of the whole girl to learn to value herself, take risks, and it equips girls to navigate gender, economic, and social barriers and grow up healthy, educated, and independent. So now therefore the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Prescott does hereby proclaim October 11th, 2021 as International Day of the Girl in the Town of Prescott. And of course that's dated uh, uh, the, uh, the 4th of October, 2021. And one thing I'll just add as a side note, we, what we see happening in Afghanistan already is a clear example of why uh, this drive for equality is, 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 is always at, uh, at the forefront. There are people that uh, wouldn't understand that here in Canada because we do have, I'll say we're mostly equal here, although Councillor Jansman may throw something at me the next time, the next time I see her, but uh, it, it is definitely uh, well needed and it's a reminder uh, across, the, uh, across the globe that this is, is still an ongoing issue. Uh, second proclamation is for October 17th uh, to the 23rd, uh, 2021. That's for Ontario Public Libraries Week. A proclamation reads, whereas Canada's libraries are partners in fostering lifelong learning, they play a vital role in helping Canadians of all ages access the information and tools that they need to live, learn, and work. And whereas Canada's libraries help Canadians develop the skills required to find and evaluate information in order to adapt and succeed in a knowledge-based economy, and whereas Canadian libraries bolster economic prosperity by providing access to essential decision-making information for organizations and businesses, and whereas libraries in Canada enhance the quality of life for all Canadians and help ensure that Canadian culture continues to flourish and thrive, therefore the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Prescott does hereby designate October 17th through the 23rd, 2021 as Ontario Public Libraries Week, and encourages the residents of Prescott to use the Prescott Public Library during this week under the theme, One Card, One Million Possibilities. And we have a fantastic library here in Prescott, folks. If you haven't used it before, please stop in and check out all that's available. There really are one million possibilities in our great little library here in the town of Prescott. And the last proclamation is for October 3rd to the 9th, 2021. That's Fire Prevention Week. Uh, whereas Prescott is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Prescott, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at the greatest risk of fire, and whereas smoke alarms detect smoke well before hu humans can, alerting people to danger in the event of fire in which you may have just seconds to escape safely, and working with smoke alarms save lives by providing early warning of fire so you and your family can safely escape. Whereas Prescott residents should be sure that everyone in the home understands the sounds of the fire alarms and knows how to respond. And residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Prescott residents will make sure their smoke and carbon monoxide alarms meet the needs of all of their family members, including those with sensory or physical disabilities. And whereas Prescott's fire department is dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and public fire safety education. And whereas Prescott residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. Uh, whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, effectively serves to remind us it is important to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Therefore, the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Prescott does hereby designate October 3rd through the 9th, 2021 as Fire Prevention Week and encourages the residents of Prescott to learn the sounds of fire safety and to support the many public safety activities and efforts for the Prescott Fire Department. And uh, another plug for our great Prescott Fire Department here, amazing job every day of the year. Uh, but again, we really saw just how valuable that uh, department is uh, to us with that accident on uh, the CN line in, in recent weeks. Can't say enough for what they do for our community and uh, please help them uh, help you by paying attention to the one of the sounds of fire safety and check those batteries and, and make sure your house is, uh, and, 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 and all, everyone in it are fully prepared uh, for the, the incident of a fire. Uh, so just help, uh, help the fire department save lives. And with that, Scroll back up here. We are at uh, section 18 of the meeting tonight. We do have a brief closed session 
uh, which I think we can handle quite quickly without any uh, any recess. So the recommendation is that uh, Council move into closed session at 7.41 p.m. to discuss matters pertaining to 18.1. That's approval of the closed session minutes from our last closed session and 18.2 cybersecurity. That's under section 239.2A of the Municipal Act, the security or the property of uh, the municipality or local boards. And we're asking that the CAO, treasurer, clerk, and deputy clerk remain in the room. Could I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Ostrander, second by uh, Councillor Burton. All those in favor? Uh, all in, uh, that, uh, that is approved, so we will move into closed session momentarily, so we will be shutting down the live YouTube feed.